Hey guys, welcome to or back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jess. Welcome to my February wrap up. So in total, I had nine books on my February TBR. I was able to complete these five right here. Um, I'm a little bit of the way through. I don't know if you can see the bookmark in there. Um, I just started Great Expectations, and I was not able to get to these bottom three, but they will be carried over into my March TBR, so hopefully I will get them done next month. So the first book I was able to complete in the month of February was Layer of Dreams by Leva Bray. So this is book two in the Diviner series, and it follows a girl named Evie, who is a diviner, she can touch objects and see their past. And so in the first novel, she is kind of like the trouble child, like her parents don't really like her that much. And so they send her to New York to live with her uncle. It's in the 1920s. She just wants to be a flapper girl and party all the time. And she discovers her ability. Her uncle works at the Museum of the Occult. So he has studied diviners for as long as he can remember. And so they, she ends up finding more like teenagers that have diviner abilities and they kind of like team up to like solve this big like mystery surrounding a ghost. And that's the first novel. This one, I gave this, I gave the first novel like a four or a five out of five stars. I loved the first novel, it was great. This one, I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. It was super slow, and I don't want to go into much detail of what happens in this book because it is the second novel, but they're finding another, like, ghost, and they added a lot more diviner characters, which I really enjoyed, like, seeing more diviners and, like, building the group because there are more books in this series. Um, but I just... I really didn't enjoy this one as much. Like I said, it was super slow. It was really scary. Uh, this is the first book I read that like actually gave me nightmares and like some of the things I was like kind of like hesitating to read. Like I'd be reading it and I'd be like, mm-hmm, because it'd be describing like the the ghosts and the creepy spirits and whatever. They were just so disturbing. Her writing was so good and so descriptive that it just it freaked me out. But it was it was a really good book. Um, it was definitely as book normally book twos in series like the second book is always a little bit less good than the other ones because it's kind of like the bridge book. So it's definitely true to form in that way. Like I felt like it was definitely, I mean it had a plot and it had something going on, but all the like character relationships that we got in the first book, they were all kind of like moving around in this book and like setting up again and it was just it was like I said it was really slow I didn't enjoy it as much but I did give it a 3 out of 5 stars and I do love this series so I definitely think you should pick up this series if you like fantasy the roaring 20s anything about ghosts <laughs> supernatural powers like pick it up it's a great series I just didn't enjoy this book as much as the first one so the second book I was able to complete in the month of February was Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So this is a romance novel following a girl, a woman named Emily. And Emily's life has recently fallen apart. Her boyfriend has broken up with her and she quit college for him and so she's just lost. She doesn't know what to do and her older sister gets in a car accident. And her older sister's car accident leaves her like kind of bedridden and she can't really move around that well. And so she moves to this little bitty town where everybody knows everybody in order to help her sister and her sister's teenage daughter kind of go about their lives until her sister is back up on her feet. So the so Emily's niece, the, her sister's daughter, wants to join the town's renaissance fair that gets put on every single year. It's like the biggest thing that happens in this entire town. And she wants to join it. Well, Emily is tasked with taking her there, and when she gets there, she figures out that her niece cannot join it unless, unless she has a parent join it too. So 
Emily gets roped into joining the Renaissance Fair where she becomes a barmaid. So as she's going to rehearsals, she meets the Renaissance Fair's, like, not owner, but the person who's in charge of it all, named Simon. And so Simon does not like Emily at all. He thinks she doesn't care about the Renaissance Fair, even though maybe she does. And so they hate each other all throughout rehearsals. And then they get to the Renaissance Fair and Simon plays a pirate. Well, this happy-go-lucky pirate ends up getting married to Emily's character, the barmaid. And so it's just so cool how she wrote those conflicting dynamics. And so every time they're in character, it's like, oh my gosh, we love each other. Oh my goodness, we're such great, like, people and, uh, I, I don't even know. Oh my gosh, we love each other. Oh my gosh, we're so happy together, yada, yada, yada. And then, like, over here, as soon as they're out of character and the Renaissance Fair is not going on, it's like, oh my god, I hate you. I don't want to see you. Go away. And it's just, those conflicting dynamics were just so well written. And it just, like, it made me so, I laughed at this book so many times because it's one of those where you can see that they like each other but they don't see it and you just you know and you know it's gonna happen and it just it just makes you laugh it makes you giggle but i love this book so much um like i said i give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars definitely one of my favorite romances that i have read um it is an adult romance it's got some steamy scenes in it so don't recommend this if you're a kid or anything like that but um yeah if you're if you like adult romances and you're if you're looking for something fun that maybe you want to reminisce on renaissance fairs because it did that for me too like i haven't been to a renaissance fair since i was like eight and i just it brought back all of the memories and i really enjoyed this so i highly recommend this book if you're looking to read a romance so the third book I was able to complete in the month of February was After Alice by Gregory Maguire. So this book follows a young girl named Ada. I think in Alice in Wonderland she's mentioned in like one line at the very beginning just like briefly and Gregory Maguire kind of took that and ran with it. So Ada is this little girl who is Alice's age and she is not like she has to wear back brace and leg braces because she can't really move that well and so because of that she's not really like favored in society I guess. Well one day her she wants to go visit Alice and her nanny and she runs off without her nanny and her nanny <laughs> is trying to find her and Ad is kind of like trying to get away from her and ends up going to the same spot where Alice fell down the rabbit hole, rabbit hole and falling down it too. So we see Ada go into Wonderland and basically follow the steps that Alice took while looking for Alice. Like she thinks she knows that Alice is in Wonderland also and she's trying to find her so that she can save her and she just kind of goes around. And I think it's so cool, to me at least, because it almost, in parts of this, it's like Ada is the one creating Wonderland, even though Alice is the one that's like going through it first. Like everything kind of revolves around Ada in this book. And not like just revolves around it, like we're following her, but like Wonderland evolves around Ada, which I thought was like super cool because he was able to like build this story, building that story, like building Alice in Wonderland. So I thought that was really cool. Um, we also fo follow in this book other perspectives. We follow Lydia, Alice's older sister, as she kind of goes through the day when Alice is missing, like getting blamed for Alice being missing and not wanting to really go find her because she doesn't like Alice. And then we follow, of course, Ada's nanny as she's running around the city frantically trying to find this child. So it's a bunch of different perspectives. It's a total different take on Wonderland. It has the same characters, but they have different interactions and I really enjoyed it. Um, it still has like all of the whimsy of Wonderland in it and yeah it was a really good book it gave it a three out of five stars um I think I would recommend it if you really like Alice in Wonderland it has that whimsy still and it just adds like another like perspective to Wonderland so I think that's really cool but yeah it was a good book three out of five stars really enjoyed it 
So the fourth book I was able to read in the month of February was Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There by Lewis Carroll. And that is the second about half of this book as it has both Alice Wonderlands in it. And I did not really like this one. I gave it a two out of five stars. Um, it follows Alice as she goes through the looking glass and goes back into Wonderland. Um, this time it's kind of like the setting is like a chess board and so we're seeing all the chess pieces and she's meeting them and she's going from like square to square. And I didn't really like it as much as I liked Alice in Wonderland. It didn't have as much of like the whimsiness to it. Um, but yeah, I just... It was a really short book, so it was easy to get through, but it was just not my favorite. It didn't make me happy to read it like any other children's classics do. Um, but yeah, I completed it, so now I can mark it off of my list of classics, so that's exciting. But yeah, two out of five stars. Didn't really like it, but I did read it this month. And the fifth and final book that I was able to read in the month of February was Cast the Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. So I have tried in 2021 to add more nonfiction to my shelves. And so this was one of those nonfiction books and I loved it. I gave it a five out of five stars. So in this novel, she is, or not novel, in this book, she is exploring the hidden caste system in America as it deals with race. And I loved, it was so well researched, it was so well thought out. I loved the stories she put in here to go along with what she was saying. Um, it was super easy to read. I loved how she, she relates it to um, how she relates it to like Nazi Germany and then she also relates it to the Indian caste system that we see really predominantly in the world. So she like brought all three of these things together and showed how they were similar and it was just so eye-opening and like I said it was well researched. It read really easily. Normally I find with non-fictions like this they use like big scientific words and theories and things that like you don't really understand and like you kind of get the point of what they're saying but you don't really connect with it and she just wrote it so well I feel like it was so easy to just like understand what she was saying and really like connect with it in a way but um yeah I love this book five out of five stars it's probably one of my favorite nonfiction books that I have read in the past but it is a chunker it's almost 500 pages so it is definitely a task if you want to read it but I highly recommend this it was so good it was so eye-opening and I just I loved it so yeah go pick this one up if you're interested so all in all I was able to finish these five books in the month of February which is not that bad because February is one a short month and two I had classes and there are some pretty hefty books on this thing so I am actually really happy with what I read this month. They were all pretty good quality. Um, I really enjoyed most of them so yeah they was a, it was a great reading month for me um, in terms of page count and quality and I just I enjoyed it. But as usual all of these books will be linked down below if you're interested so go check those out. Let me know in the comments what you read for February as I would love to know what you guys are doing. Also let me know if y'all read any of these and if you agree with me or if you disagree because I just I love talking about books so you know I'd love to hear y'all's opinions. Um, also as usual uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon with another one. Bye!